could, um, we could have. Hello and welcome to my wonder world. This is the 15th anniversary of uh, tomorrow, the 3rd of September, marks to the day, 15 years exactly, it was the Monday the 3rd of September 1979 that the very first Wonderworld uh, went to air from Channel 10. In those, in that very opening day, it, uh, I think it went only from Sydney and Melbourne, it was a very short time after that, the Wonderworld grew and um, uh, became the predominant children's program on most of the markets throughout Australia. And uh, you all enjoying the beautiful weather. Look at that. Look, that's Scott Monument. Actually, show them the Scott Monument. It's much better looking at me. That's the Scott Monument. We're on Princess Street. And there's an English flag up there. And then they look up there. And I'm just showing this bit up here. Broadcasting <laughs> nationwide live from Scotland. Version 1215, the UK's fastest great radio station. So there it is. Have a great party. Look after my mum, who is at the party. She's there, so look after her. Sylvia, don't drink too much. Try and steal some of the cutlery if you possibly can. And Simon, I promise I'll have my cutting board in skin on Monday. And I'll see you next Okay, have a great party. Let me get back to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this is Jonathan Coleman's mum, Sylvia Coleman. We really enjoyed ourselves there, and uh, he's very homesick. So it looks like he'll be back again very shortly. He misses you all <laughs> terribly. Thank you. Which I think was one of the hallmarks of Wonderworld was the contest, the competition at the end of the program, or as Simon would say, the campaign. <laughs> now I know we say treat kangaroos because when I was in uh, London. Uh, black and white room in New Guinea, sits up the top of the tree laughing and singing the theme tune from Wonderworld. <laughs> but this particular uh, campaign, I, I, as the particular program, I couldn't understand it. it was, we've got to save the one and the two cent coins, Alan. And we've got to ask children, make a list of all the things you can buy with one and two cent coins. Now, I knew what si Simon's motive was. Without one and two cent coins in circulation, we couldn't pay the people working on the program. <laughs> but when it came to a list of all the things the children wrote in about, they said that the only reason to save a one and a two cent coin was that's the only way they could bribe Simon to get a job on the bloody program. <laughs> so Simon's given me a wind-up cue, and I don't, have an auto cue. I don't have an auto cue like Simon, which is down there. It's a sign saying, this room's costing me a lot of money. <laughs> And you're carrying on a bit. But listen, I just, I think, you know, even though Simon says don't thank anyone, I want to thank everyone from the editors, the assistant editors, the cameramen, the sound recorders, etc., who worked on Wonderworld, because in those early days when we went through four premises, we went from Carlotta Street to Channel 10 to Atchison Street, sorry, starting off in Simon's front room, which actually charged rent for before he got up out of bed. Right? So, I want to thank everyone who worked on Wonder World, but I especially want to thank two women, because behind Simon there's at least normally one successful woman. The first one I want to thank is Gina Reynolds, who, over Simon's dead body, I asked to become the associate producer of Wonder World, and we set up together a production system that I think worked, and I hope still works today, and secondly, I want to thank the unsung hero, uh, heroine of Wonderworld, and that's Rosanna. Yeah. Yeah. So let's hear it for Rosanna, everyone. And then back to the old man. talk about a memorable anecdote. So I'm sorry I'm going to bring up the dear dead departed, but the biggest memory I have was the time that Simon insisted that we take Woodrow on a story with us. And I discovered how much those sort of dogs salivate. And guess what? Jonathan made sure I sat in the back seat with the dog. That was good old Jono. It's a good thing he's in London. 
And I discovered not only do they salivate, they also go all the time, and they drop fur. So I started off the story completely covered with dog saliva and quite well furred. Uh, thank you, Simon, and thank you, Woodrow. <laughs> I heard a team work, but this is ridiculous. It reminds me of a guy I met in India. <laughs> How many times have I been to India? I met a guy who was a hunter in India, and we went over there to film tigers, and he said, I just killed a huge tiger with a club. I said, that's, that's fantastic. You're a legend. You should be on Wonderworld. He said, oh, no, no, nothing special. There was 100 of us in the club. <laughs> and look here, 200 people. It's a pretty good club. We've had some uh, for Wonderworld. In fact, Paul Roy was the guy, kind of McCulloch reminds me, Paul Roy was the guy who sat filming Edith with... Paul Roy was wearing big floppy shorts and no underwear. <laughs> Edith didn't marry him, but she felt like it, I'm sure. Some of you have even given your life, or almost, anyway, like James Graham, who uh, was run over by a wild bull on a recent Wonderworld story, and on the wide shot he just bounced back to his feet and kept on filming. He never missed a beat. That's... <laughs> That's a wonderful cameraman. <laughs> They're heroes. And, uh, or even, even here tonight is a man named Malcolm McDonald who had an aeroplane crash on top of him and he never missed a beat. He shot the whole thing and <laughs> even though it flattened him. <laughs> oh, Malcolm McDonald. And if you look at him now, well, don't look at him actually. He's not a pretty sight. <laughs> but he's alive and he's doing really well and he's making documentaries and doing heaps of things and he's an inspiration. One of the magic magic things about Wonderworld has always been it's away trips, I always thought. Sherry Jobbins and Maury Powell Parker, <laughs> who did James Bond stories all over the world and had the Malaysian government up in arms with the Australian government after doing a James Bond story in one of their mosques. <laughs> and like that, Brett Clements in the Philippines, who spent two weeks perfecting the art of the Aussie chanda. <laughs> we really feed them well when they're overseas, don't we? <laughs> Brett also got arrested once outside the Queen's residence in England uh, for um, pointing his Sandhauser at the Royal behind. And the police turned up and took him away. They thought it was a bazooka. And uh, Philip Tanner and Edith Bliss, who went to Kashmir, and the country has been closed to tourists ever since. <laughs> Phil also reminds me, talking about Philip Tanner, reminds me this wonderful, wonderful shot of Philip Tanner going to a hot springs in Japan. And all he could think to do was to take out, I don't know how he organised this, but all the way from Australia he bought a Lipton's tea bag and he sat in a hot springs with a thousand Japanese and jiggled it, or dangled it up and down. Are you a jiggler or a dangler? <laughs> Simon too has almost died on this show. I can't forget the midnight phone call that I received from Simon. Where was it? In Jakarta? In Jakarta to say, I've just been to see the Pope and my plane crashed on the way back and I've saved 400 lives because he blessed my rosary beads. Oh dear. Or at least that's the way the media story went. Uh, I know because I placed the media story. <laughs> Woodrow was also the subject, Paul Woodrow, the subject of more death threats than I care to mention. Uh, I know that too because I placed all those stories. Poor, poor, poor Woodrow. He was hated, loved by the public, but hated by everybody who worked with him, as Sandy Major pointed out. It's absolutely true. I remember a whole series of things about Paul Woodrow. He was the bane of our life and the bane of Channel 10's life when we were recording at Channel 10. He regularly ate the makeup lady's powder puff, and as a result of that, he regularly shat right underneath the air conditioning unit. So you'd be working in the little control room as Rob Harvey, who is also here, our first director and our longest director, he'll tell you, it evacuated the entire control room. You couldn't work in a control room when they're sucking up air from an enormous pile of dog poop, and that dog, a dog, had an enormous. He also had an enormous bladder, and at the end of Wonderworld, or at least the end of my time on Simon Townsend's Wonderworld, Channel 10 had just installed $10,000 worth of new carpet in their foyer. And Simon marched in there to confront the Channel 10 executives with Woodrow on a leash, and Woodrow's first act was to prove that a bloodhound has the biggest bladder in the history of the world, and he pissed all over the $10,000 carpet, totally ruining it which I thought was disgusting. I said to myself at the time, how disgusting, but what a fabulous critic. And Channel 10 sent the bill. Yes, Channel 10 sent the bill. All right. Anyway, um, this is the first, this is the second 15th anniversary party that I've been to. The first one was my own. And, and, and I, there's nothing more to say because you can waffle on and on forever, except to say this one small thing. 
Don't drink too much, you have to drive. Make sure you go home safely. I need you around. It's lovely to know you all, and you're all going to be major stars in the network in the future. Don't drink too much, or you'll end up like a friend of mine who went to a 15th anniversary party, and all he could remember at the end of the night was a lot of familiar faces and a golden toilet seat. He didn't know where the place was. He wandered around through all the houses in the neighborhood knocking on doors to say, where is that place with that golden toilet seat? Until finally he knocked on one door and the, he said, excuse me, do you have a, a golden toilet seat here? <laughs> and the woman of the house turned around and said, Harry, Harry, here's the guy who pissed in your saxophone last night. <laughs> It's been a great pleasure to work with you all. I'll hand you back to the man who wants all the laughs tonight. <laughs> He's probably not going to get them. God bless you all. It's been a great pleasure working with you all. And I hope the next 15 years for all of you is as splendid as the last 15 years have been for me. Harvey Shaw. Um, in a moment, if he's Philip Tanner, are you here? Anyone seen Philip Tanner?